When learning guitar, most of us learn to see chords and scales as separate entities. This is logical as far as their function and application goes, but theoretically, chords and scales both use the same building blocks. It's only in the past century or so that chords and scales have been given a more defined role in music. Chords as the backing progression in a song, scales as part of the lead harmony on top of that backing progression. The aim of this lesson is to help you see the bigger picture that guitarists often lose sight of, the intrinsic relationship between chords and scales, the synthesis of the two elements in relation to where they come from and their musical function. Understanding this concept will help you in many ways, such as creating fresh chord voicings and selecting notes for a solo. The true benefits will only be fully realised in your own mind when you start to apply this concept in your own music. Let's first take a look at how we can derive chords from a parent scale. This is the first step in understanding how chords and scales are intrinsically connected. Here are the intervals of the Mixolydian scale. The most elementary chord intervals contained within that scale are those of the major triad, root, major third and fifth. Therefore, we know this scale is compatible with major chords. But we can also use other intervals in the scale to create an extended chord that would work under or as part of a Mixolydian solo. For example, we could take the flat 7th to create a dominant 7th chord. Or we could leave out the 7th and just add the 2nd tone to the major triad. This is often called the 9th in chords when the octave of the 2nd is used, but that's for another lesson. When seeing it this way, it's as if the scale is the pot from which we can draw various tones to create a compatible chord. If we visualise the Mixolydian scale on the fretboard using a pattern based on a couple of its positions, we can literally pull chord shapes out of the scale pattern using that scale's intervals. Theoretically, you could pull out any chord shape from this pattern and the scale would be compatible. Some examples. In the key of A, starting with the major triad, I'm just going to lay down an A bass note to establish the key. Essentially, what we're doing there is playing different inversions of the major triad. The scale gives us everything we need to visualise and play these inversions. Now let's try some other variations. Remember, because we're pulling these tones straight from the Mixolydian scale, they will all be compatible with that scale. Try finding your own chord voicings from the scale. So as you can see and hear, once you learn a scale pattern, you can use it to find interesting chord voicings as well as using it for soloing phrases.
This in turn should open your eyes to adding chord phrasing to your solos, since you're no longer thinking of scales purely in terms of single consecutive notes, rather a group of intervals that harmonise with the scale and key in which you're playing. We can, of course, also apply this concept to minor scales, such as melodic minor. Even just using its first two positions, we have countless chord voicing options, knowing that any combination of intervals we pull from the pattern will be compatible with the overall scale. Of course, when selecting your chord tones from the scale pattern, it's good to have some sense of what the key tones of the scale are. For example, melodic minor is characterised by its minor third, major seventh and major sixth, which give it that ethereal, tense sound. To begin with though, just try random groupings of intervals, experimenting with different finger positions adding and removing tones, etc. This should be a really fun way to discover chord voicings outside the same old block bar chords and open position chords you learn as a beginner. As you become more advanced, this method will prove a good way to find chord inversions and pinpoint specific chord melodies and harmonies. So, we can use scales as the scaffolding for building chords. Incidentally, this also means we can pull arpeggios out of a scale, because where there's a chord, there's an arpeggio. More on that another time. Now, while it seems like the scale, in effect, comes before the chord, and the chord is built from the scale, this was really just a process to help those who have already learned a few scales and chords and rely on that framework of understanding. In reality, the intervals of the chord and scale come from a higher place in the musical system. By that, I mean intervals themselves do not imply a chord or a scale. Intervals are just the building blocks of music whether we choose to use those intervals to build a chord or scale. Once you understand that, the division between chords and scales becomes less and less significant. Chords may function more naturally in a rhythm context and scales in a lead context, but theoretically they come from the same source and we can mix them and use them to complement each other in licks and progressions. In other words, the line between playing chords and scales can be easily blurred and this is when you're truly free to express yourself musically. So bear in mind the idea of pulling chord tones from a scale is only useful as far as visualising a bunch of intervals in one convenient place on the fretboard, since most people learn intervals through scales. Eventually, if you spend enough time exploring and developing the concept covered in this lesson, you'll think more in terms of note selection in order to build a flowing melody or harmony specifically suited to its place in the music. This will hopefully be a welcome alternative to the preformed chord shapes and scale runs which can dictate and limit the overall sound of your music. Instead of always using rigid chord changes and moving up and down a scale, think in terms of a flowing harmony and how each note in the harmony moves to the next.
In a later part, we'll explore how to use the concept we've looked at to create intricate melody and harmony, further blurring the line between typical scale and chord function.